Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's so good to see all of you here this morning. We have a special service planned for you today, a service of lessons and carols. It is the story of Christ coming into the world told through music and scripture readings. It goes back uh, several hundred years to uh, Cambridge College, to King's College, where they started doing this, this service, and the basic format has remained the same. Uh, a few of the hymns change over the years, but basically a lot of churches around the world are participating in this same service today. And today it should have a little special meaning for us because we have been moving through the Old Testament story and hearing about the journey of our people as they became uh, expectant of a Messiah and what it means to have a Savior come in and say that, again, I will be your God and you will be my people. And so we get to see this fulfillment of what they have been hoping for after having been in exile for so long and then cast out then rebuilding and now expecting peace after being conquered by the Romans. And so this is a great story of hope for our people, and it is also our story today. So enjoy this service of Lessons and Carols. A couple of announcements for today. You will notice that we have our all-church potluck today at 6 p.m. and a special program by the youth as well that's been uh, in the works for several weeks, so we're excited about that. And there's also the Christmas grocking, which I'm very interested to be a part of for the first time this year. So please join us for that at 6 o'clock today. Are there any other announcements? Less. I'd like to bring your attention to the announce, uh, announcements on the back page. Uh, next Sunday, following the service, I uh, would like to in, invite everybody to join the worship committee in taking down the greens. Uh, all the help would be appreciated, and it could be a uh, wonderful and fun time if we have a lot of people involved. So. Wish to see you all there. Thank you. Uh, if this Lessons and Carols wasn't enough for you, I invite you to tune in to Iowa Public Television Monday night um, at 9 p.m. Christmas with Warburg uh, was uh, recorded this year and will be broadcasted at 9 p.m. Um, I'm in the Wind Ensemble. Uh, Tanner Sussman, Garrett Carlson, and Mallory Fluger are all from Mount Pleasant and they will be in the choir. So um, that's Monday night at 9 p.m. on Iowa Public Television. It's also Thanks. It is kind of a book. If, if you had a goal of reading a book this year, here you go. This, this bulletin is one. Uh, so one other announcement. We, we will be moving into the fellowship hall, and that will take place January 3rd, not January 10th. I don't know if you've seen the construction going on, but when I, when I had said that the next night at the session meeting, as someone said, there aren't going to be any pews in the sanctuary on January 3rd. So it might be hard for people to sit in here. So we will start worship on January 10th or January 3rd in the fellowship hall. And that's why we have to take down the Christmas decorations before Epiphany's over is because we will be moving down there. And one of the things that I would ask is there's not as much parking on the south side of the church. So if you are able bodied and you can make that walk from this parking lot through the long hall and down to that end, do so so that our folks who uh, need a little uh, well, don't don't move as, as quickly as they used to can park on that end closer to those doors. Uh, just a little bit of hospitality. Uh, it goes a long way. So keep those spots open for, for those who, who need them. OK. Any other announcements? I just want to say our daughter Jordan graduated yesterday from ISU. Oh. <laughs> During Advent, the four Sundays before Christmas Eve, the traditional call to worship is replaced with the lighting of the four candles of the Advent wreath. Purple is the historic liturgical color for three of the four Sundays of Advent, once the color associated with royalty, it symbolizes Christ as the Prince of Peace. 
We anticipate hope, peace, joy, and love through Christ. Let us worship God in Christ through the Holy Spirit. Today, we relight the first three candles of the Advent wreath, the candles of hope, peace, and joy. And now, we light the fourth candle. This is the candle of love. May we receive God's hope as we read together these words from the book of Deuteronomy. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the strangers, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Please join me in the prayer of adoration. Let us pray. Teach us to love, O Lord. May we always remember to put you first as we follow Christ's footsteps, that we may know your love and show it in our lives. As we prepare for our celebration of Jesus' birth, also fill our hearts with love for the world, that all may know your love and the one whom you have sent, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Please stand if you are able.
A reading from Genesis. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is it that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return.
A reading from Genesis. The angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Please stand.
Please be seated. A reading from Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his eyes ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp. And the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
A reading from Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. A reading from Luke. In those days a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Cornelius was governor of Syria. All went to their own town to be registered. 
Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee of Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He, he went to the be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who he was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her first son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
I'm reading from Luke. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Please stand if you are able. from Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the, chief priests, all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where, where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judah, Judea, for so it has been, been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is, my, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. 
Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Merry Christmas. If we were to take Christ out of Christmas, what do we have left? Today we are going to take the Christmas joy offering. The envelopes are in your pews. And these are, this money goes for two promises for every gift. The promise to assist individuals and families who have dedicated their lives to the church and also promise to support racial, ethnic education, leadership, and development. Today, we celebrate God's gift to us. Let us now offer our gifts to God by sharing our tithes and offerings.
The ninth lesson comes from John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the word did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen the glory and the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Please stand. Please be seated. Beloved in Christ, in this Christmas time, it is our delight to hear again the message of the angels and to remember in heart and mind what it means to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass with the babe lying in the manger. As we have read and marked in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience and to the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child, let us give thanks with joy for this place as we sing our last carol of praise. 
But first, let us pray for the needs of this whole world, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for the mission and unity of the church, and especially in this country and within this city. Let us pray. Let us at this time remember in Christ's name the poor and the helpless. The hungry and the oppressed. The sick and those who mourn. The lonely and the unloved. the aged, and the little children. Christ loved each of these and said, Bring them to me. Therefore, we have lifted them to him in prayer. And now let us remember our servicemen and women, those serving us far from family and home. May the Spirit keep them safe in this prayer, find them, and offer warmth. And let us remember our own family and friends with gratitude as we offer prayers for anything that they may need. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself hath taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, God's kingdom has come and we proclaim joy on earth. For Christ the King was born. Please stand.
darkness shall never overcome it. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ,